One of my viewers, Roger, recently challenged me to make Conway's Game of Life and types. And I love when you guys send me little challenges and messages and stuff, so I thought, okay. I mean, yeah, I thought that was a tough idea. So here's my implementation. I'm using the Mac OS file preview just because I was getting like some screen tearing issues with Zathra, Mu PDF. I didn't try Poplar on it, kind of I'm lazy, but you know. And here's what it looks like when you hold down space. You can see I've got the glider gun rendering. It's a 500 page PDF, all rendered using types. I mean, you know what the game of life is like. Let me jump into how the code works. So I started off, I just tried to create like a working version that was not optimized at all because premature optimization, that's the root of all evil. And that's actually like true. The more you program, the more you'll realize that. But basically what it is, the, the first version was just like a imperative kind of 2D array, you know, a standard approach where you have like an X and Y array of arrays. And you can see I set up a board with a range of cells and then I just kind of map it to another range of cells and then I just return all zeros. So it's just an empty blackboard. And then at these positions, I set up like white cells. And then the life function basically takes a board, creates a new board. I know this is super inefficient, but I'll get to the optimized versions in a second. And then it just loops through the existing board, creates a new row, loops through all the cells, and then does like a neighbor calculation, which is basically just two ranges between negative one and one. And then we make sure we're not like checking the cell itself, which is zero, zero, and then get the offsets and then index the old board at those offsets. And then basically we just push them back and then gives us all the neighbors per the cell. And then once we have that, we can just count up the number of live neighbors and then just do like a simple little, the, the rules of the game of life, if you don't know, are like if there's less than two live neighbors, then the cell dies. If there's two or three, then it stays alive. Well, if there's two, it stays alive. If there's three, it can come back to life. And then if there's more than three, it dies again. And so basically, yeah, I just do that every frame and then push back the new cell and then the new board and then yeah just just return the new board from that function so super inefficient and basically creating a whole new thing from scratch and then i wrote this little function to cell that basically takes in a zero or one and then it either returns a box that's white or a box that's black with width and height cell size so that's that's what's creating the little cells and then for I in range 10 is how many frames I want to render. So each one of these will render a new page. So it'll be a 10 page document. And then I'll align the content in the center plus horizon, which just means like center vertically and horizontally. It's like the CSS equivalent of grid, grid item, center, justify center or whatever. And then basically all this is, let me see if I can wrap this. So I take the board, I flatten it into a 1D array, and then I map it to cell. And you can see types has very, very nice like first class functions and functional programming patterns. I can just pass uh, to cell to map as a first class function, and then it just like fills in the argument. So that was an okay approach. Right? You can see if I preview it, this is like a simple little just glider setup renders these all very nicely. I could even up it to, I don't know, 100, probably render pretty quickly. Yep, because it's a nice and small board. Another very interesting thing a lot of people don't know about types is it's kind of always in like a debugger mode where you can always kind of see live variable inputs, which is a super, super cool thing about it. So for instance, let's look at like old cell, um, which I can do with hovering. My LSP, which is tiny mist, it'll show like what potential values that could be, you know what I mean? Or for instance, if I hover over neighbors, you can see it's actually like sending me the results. It's, it's a lagging like a little bit because I'm rendering a hundred things. All right, and then next up, I made some optimizations. I still kept a 2D array, which is still not perfect for an implementation of the game of life, but I wanted to show people like what more functional patterns and types look like. So you can see I trimmed it down quite a bit I started using range and map instead of for loops for the neighbors and then here basically I separated neighbors into its own function and then here instead of like a long complicated if statement I made this unreadable monstrosity which is just basically like a ternary I mean it's technically not a ternary but so here's here's a cool optimization 
taking the amount of live neighbors instead of like counting them up inefficiently with a for loop you can actually just do filter through calc.odd and then that remains all the ones that are one and then you just count the length of that and then i check the live version of that so i thought this is cool whatever but still not super optimized i hadn't made um, conway's game of life in a while and so i found a f super functional implementation in closure and i tried to copy that and they have a much cooler way of doing it, which is basically instead of having a 2D array, right, keeping track of all the positions and what they are, you only keep track of the live positions in like a hash set so that there's no duplicates. And then what you do is every frame you get all the neighbors of those live positions and then you basically concatenate them all together. So you have a big array and then you run frequencies, which is like a pretty common functional language tool on those things and if you get like a neighbor three times in that concatenated set you know that it's like the neighbor to three live cells and therefore it comes alive so that makes everything a lot more efficient so the final optimized version opt2.type is basically that implementation fully functionally now types doesn't have like the frequencies function that other languages like closure or ocaml or haskell have so I had to implement it myself and I went all over the types forums and luckily people were able to help me. It is like a little janky and I actually put it in a utils file because it's like bad, but all it basically does is it takes an array, folds it with an accumulator dictionary, and then in every like run through with the fold function, it just inserts the the pairs in there and then updates it if it already exists. I also threw like just some configurations in here, like a basic glider setup and then the glider gun just so the file would be cleaner to work in. So yeah, here's the final optimized version, right? The neighbors, what we can actually do, which I found much better, is return all the positions rather than like actually trying to index the board at it. And right here, we can do another optimization where we we skip over the middle one filter for none because the middle one will return none there's no real way i found to do that with with this double range but maybe someone can find a more optimal version and then we basically just check that it's in bounds so the x coordinate is greater than zero and it's less than n and same for the y coordinate so that's the neighbors and then this is nasty. Going from the inside out, I took this nice, clean, imperative version that everyone can read and made it into a functional monstrosity, but I thought it was a cool exercise. So reading it from the inside out, I guess, we're going to take the board that is passed as, a, as an argument to this function, map it into neighbors and then join those all together. So that's gonna be a big long array of neighbors. And once we have that, we can pass it to frequencies and then this will show us how many of each neighbor occur. And then once we have the frequencies, we can filter it. And how this filter function is working is it's going through each frequency and we're saying if the frequency is two and the old board B dot contains FR at one, so this point, then we're gonna maintain it or if it just contains three, the frequency exactly equals three, then we're gonna make it alive. And everything else we don't have to actually handle. We don't have to handle the death cases. They're just kind of automatically handled since we're only storing live cells. And draw board is now also a little different because we don't actually store all the cells. So what I had to do instead was loop through the, the number of cells we have, and then for each of those things, map it to an xy point, and then join that all into basically a flat map of points, and then map each of those points, let me set a wrap here, and then if our board contains that point, that means it's in the number of live cells, we're gonna render it as white, otherwise we're gonna render it as black, and by that I mean we're gonna render it as a one or a zero and then we can take that and map it to dot to cell and then we're good. And then I render it here at the very bottom um, for I in range 500. So yeah, this is a fun little project. I'm surprised about how much functional programming type supports. I didn't super get into it before, but I'm also sure that this is not fully optimized for what it could be. I mean, performance wise, like, Generating 500 pages in 10 seconds is pretty good, better than LaTeX for sure, but 
I'm sure it could also be much faster, and I'm probably doing something egregiously wrong. So I'll put the GitHub repository URL in the description or comments or something. And if you think you can optimize anything, by all means, submit a PR to it. And if not, yeah, you can just look at the code, see how it works. It's a good learning resource for types. I definitely learned a lot while making this. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time.